Good evening, everyone. If you are watching, I'm live, ready to go. <clears throat> um, we are going to be continuing um, something that I started previously, which is um, we were working on a project actually called Up and Coming Barbershop. It is to build us a website. Um, from scratch so we're basically working as though we were working for a real business and building it uh, building the entire website from scratch which would start with investigation we did that last week um, last week or well two weeks ago really no um, we did that about two weeks ago and then we started working on wireframes and mock-ups and today I'm gonna be completing the mock-up that I started I actually would like to um, just briefly touch on that and then we will jump on over into actually building some code and then um, hopefully next time around we will try to um, go back and do a second um, wireframe and a second mockup and a second set of um, skeleton code basically or really and truly I'll try to see if I can reuse as much as possible in terms of code but we'll have two different layouts at least so that we have options to work with. Alright, so I am going to um, jump in in just a minute, just updating the stream title because I forgot to do that. Um, so I'm going to update the stream title and check a couple things and we will jump right in. Alright, so we got everything updated and working, so I'm ready to go. Um, I'm hoping Inkscape will start. I started it and it hasn't shown up yet, so I'm probably going to have to run this in the terminal and see if um, something went wrong along the way. Oh, here it is. <laughs> as, as is usual, as soon as I said that, Inkscape finally decided to pop up. So. We're basically ready to go. Alright, just one second. Let me transition. There we go. And if you see me looking between two different directions, I have two screens and I am making sure to keep tabs on both and also trying to make sure I keep tabs on the chat. So, yeah. Alright, so let me see here. I'm not sure if I would have opened the, um, the drawing from here last time. No, it doesn't seem that way to me, so I'm gonna have to open it manually. Alright, I am trying to switch windows at this point, but it is not detecting Inkscape for whatever reason. Alright, that's showing us Atom, which I don't need. For whatever reason, this doesn't want to capture Inkscape, so I'm not sure how I'm going to fix that. Maybe I'll just have to add a new, um, a new window capture thing. Should be able to capture a skip this time. Yep, there we go. Good. Now I just need to move this into the right position. And 
There we go. All right, so let me open up this project and we will get back to work on the um, mock-up. By the way, I did notice that recent builds of 8Scape are a lot more stable, just as Martin told me they would be, so we should be working without crashes for the most part today, I hope. Um, I completely forgot where it was looking. Streams is where, yeah. <laughs> I had a brain fog moment. I think all of us are kind of going through that at this point in time, so you can relate. Uh, this should be under stream, shouldn't it? Oh no, and I remember I'm looking in the wrong folder. Instead of artwork, I need to be in websites. Y'all are getting an insight into my um, folder structure and stuff unnecessarily, but yeah, <laughs> that happens. All right, so we're looking for projects up and cutting. There it is. And the mock-up. All right, so this is option zero. And of course, Inkscape decided to misbehave and crash today. Because why not? Unless it's that file. It may be that file that caused the crash, and I probably shouldn't blame Inkscape. We'll soon see. Okay, here we are. Right, so as I said, we're going to work on this mock-up briefly, and then um, I'm going to start turning this into code. But I'm not going to do the full design today. I'm going to basically give you a rundown of how we would decide what elements need to go onto the page and then begin to build it out from there. And we'll probably do a little bit of basic CSS, but one of the things I really want to emphasize today is how separated the um, the CSS and the um, HTML are. So we can basically build the same HTML and have two different layouts for the page. All right, I just remembered that I did not switch to um, to this other output. So just a second here, let me do some technical stuff <laughs> and you'll see me again in a second. Just need to fix something here. Okay, there we are. I thought I had switched to this earlier and apparently I didn't. So yeah, all right. So no more issues, I don't believe. One thing though we're gonna fix in this mock-up, the height is obviously um, not correct because we need more space to show all the elements when we scroll down. So I'll just make this about 2048 in height and that should give us enough room to work with, I believe. Maybe a little taller than that because we're obviously gonna have more information than that. So let me go for about 3200. That should be a pretty reasonable page there. It's a little bit of a little bit too much scrolling from my um, particular preferences, but you still want to have some space to include some other details. All right. So um, the last time I would have told you we want to um, present people at the forefront because we want to attract people to this barber shop, and so you're focusing on people, right? And that's basically why we have these images here. And then you're gonna have some events and any other important, this is misspelled of course, because why not? Any other important details here, and then a story, like a, a story excerpt about the barbershop so they learn more, blah, blah, blah and then a button somewhere around there to take you there and a, probably like a picture will go here so let me just drop in a um a square here
Right. This square would basically represent a photo of, say, like the founder of the barbershop or anything like that. Alright, so we'll put some kind of rectangle down here to represent the button that you would click to go into that actual story to read more. Of course, the words read more are not advisable. Um, basically because most UX experts will tell you it's kind of redundant and all that. Use some more descriptive text. I personally beg to differ because read more gets the point across. But... And if you want to be um, accepted in the wider world, use use what everyone else is using. But personally, I have no issue with the words read more. They get the point to you. You actually are going to read more. But anyway, <laughs> that's, a, that's a minor grudge I have against that particular piece of advice. Alright, so I'm going to copy these boxes here. Oops. And these would be testimonials. We don't need to actually mark them off on the page as testimonials. Let me just get some alignment going here. I'm going to group these and align to the center of the page. And then duplicate and bring them down. Now, something I was thinking of today actually that you can practice if you want to make life easier for yourself as a developer or a designer. What you can do, let's say you're working with um, elements like these here that are going to be actual code, but you don't want to show the, the elements of code that are, well, let me use a different word. You don't want to show the aspects of the code that say like a, um, a user or, or even the person you're developing the website for is going to see or they're going to care about you can duplicate this mock-up when you're done and drop in like say um, the class names you could drop in um, the different kinds of elements there so like let's say I wanted to represent that this here would be a section I could create a little piece here, or maybe I could put it off the side somewhere and add a line next to it. I could have a section, or better yet, I could have element and put section, and then like class, and this would be um, testimonial. I can't even see what I'm typing, so let me just fix that quickly. Okay, stroke is off, fill is on, and I still don't see a thing. Somehow this seems to be ignoring the values I have put in. Okay, good. So, right, you could have element is section. Let's make that lowercase. And class would be testimonial. And any other information you want to include in there, you could have a little box that says all that. You can grab all these and drop them off to a site. Right, so that information would be useful to us as designers, but it's not necessary for um, your end users and it's not necessary for your clients. So why put it off the site too? It's not actually on the canvas. so. When I export this from Inkscape, it will just be a PNG, and whatever you see on the canvas is what we would actually get for the end user or the client that is going to be looking at this picture. But for us who actually work with the source, we would have that information still saved there. Alright, so I'm going to actually make this something a little more useful. Like, when I came to up and cutting, I didn't know 
what they wanted, but they took one look at me and immediately knew the cut I needed. I never looked so good in my life. Let me put an exclamation mark at the end of this, of course. And we're going to use an italic font for this. In fact, let me not use Leto, I'm going to use Alexander. Obviously, we're not going to use Alexander in the final design, but this is just to get a, an idea of what it would look like on the page, on the final page. If you're doing this in real life, though, I would advise you to actually match the fonts that you're going to use in your actual project in your mock-up. So, don't copy what I'm doing at this point. Now you can decide um, to have two kinds of options. So, to give you an example of how we would do that, I'm going to leave this here, and then I'm going to come over here and have another testimonial that is not necessarily as lengthy as that, but I'm going to keep it to one side and put an image. Then down here, I'm going to do the same thing and put it over the other side. So basically, within one mock-up, you get to have different options. You can tell your um, your client, this is option one, option two, option three, option four, etc. And they can pick from that. Unless, of course, you have previously found that dealing with your client, they don't do well with multiple options in the same um, like box, if you will, then you don't really want to go that route. Alright, so let's say we have here um, up and cutting is more than a barber shop, it's a lifestyle, well, better yet, it's a community. It's a lifestyle. Alright, so we could drop this over here. And then we get a an image would go here somewhere. Good, so that's one option you can have. There's a nut ball. Okay, so one option, two options. Now we can have three by just simply copying this, bring it down here, and flip things around. My mouse is not cooperating as usual. Alright, so I'll we'll put that to be right aligned this time. And another option we could have is a short blurb that's center aligned. So, let's drop some text in here, like, up and cutting is unmatched in the barbershop. Now this is, this is like the worst testimonial ever, <laughs> but we're still going to use it. In the barbershop industry, have you even heard of such a thing? Alright, and below these, let me pull up the, um, I'm going to save this and I'm going to pull up the wireframe because below these is supposed to be some other information, but I don't remember exactly what that was.
All right, and in the meantime, while that file manager is loading, I am going to drop a square over here to demarcate where our elements are going to be used. Well, where our section element is going to be used. So, right down to about here. And again, just to remind you, there's there are many different ways to design mockups and stuff. They're, I wouldn't necessarily say they're industry standards per se, but they're some best practices, but you can use whatever style you choose. This isn't even like my quote unquote official style. This is just me kind of like winging it, you could say based on experience and what I've done before. But um, typically if you're working in an agency or you're working for, um, you know, like a, a larger company, or you're working even sometimes with an individual. Each person and each and each um, company, each instance you're, you work with, there are going to be different ways of approaching things like this. Some people may prefer to work in Figma, and others may prefer to work in other software, etc. Just reminding you, there's no one set way to do this, so long as you get the job done. All right, so let me pull up the other. Well, Y'all can't see this, by the way, because I have the, um, I have window sharing on and not screen sharing, so y'all won't see this part. But I'm gonna pull up the wireframe. All right, this is, taking slightly longer because I went into the wrong folder. <laughs> Alright. Um, where am I looking now? Streams, projects. Alright, I'm going to switch windows as soon as this opens and you should be able to see the mock-up. I can't actually switch my doors. All right, what I'm gonna probably have to do is, oh wait, I can, I missed it. Wasn't seeing it. There it is. Okay, so here's the mock-up. Not the mock-up, it's already wireframe. So let me see what else we needed. There's some extra information, and then there's credit and copyright. Okay. And I decided to switch this here from being kind of lopsided to being aligned with the testimonials, but that doesn't have to be the case. So your client may tell you, well, I prefer what you have in the wireframe, or they may tell you what, they may tell you they prefer what you have in the mock-up. So again, this is a, an area where as you go through this process, you can look and see, okay, well, this could really work with, with multiple options. I could say, let me, switch the um the stuff around and build as another option so i could save this this file or i could even just like create a layer in this file or whatever shift some stuff around and export all those different images and I have a whole bunch of options for, for my client and it saves me time and energy because i don't really have to do too much to actually come up with all those options all right so as i said extra info we're going to drop that in And typically that would be, um, it could be anything ranging from like location information, although I would prefer, or I would well, not prefer, but advise you stuff like location information and stuff with something like a barbershop, put that in a more um, upward position or location on your page because you don't want people to come and let's say they're just trained, let's say you have a, um, a, a potential client of the barbershop so they're a visitor to the website and they're just trying to get to the barbershop they don't want to come to the website i have to look for the next 15 minutes to find where the barbershop is they want to come to that website and maybe you could drop it right here or you could put a, um like a line somewhere on top of these images you know anywhere you can think of that you can fit that in you can put it there but for the sake of just um 
you know getting the the point across of extra information i'll put it here for no and i do see some people doing this recently especially like putting like a black box down here or dark gray box or something and sticking their extra information like location and phone numbers and all that down here i would advise against that because as cool as it looks it's actually a very bad user experience certainly for me like the other day to give a real life example I had to find some important information on a government website. Actually, two of them this happened with. Well, one isn't a government thing. It's, it's a government website and, and also a, a private company. But anyway, e in either case, both of them are pretty much designed the same way. And I wonder if it's maybe the same person or, or persons responsible. But I get on the website, I see a whole bunch of flashy ads and banners and all the other stuff all over. And of course that stuff works well for marketing, but then the information I'm actually looking for is at the very bottom of the page, which required me to scroll and read, scroll and read, scroll and read, scroll and read, scroll and read. So they get to the bottom with a big fat gray box with a bunch of tiny little text in it with phone numbers, email address, all the other stuff. And the worst part was most of the information I actually needed still wasn't really a lot visible because they chose bad colors and everything like that. So by that point, it was just frustrating and didn't really feel like doing what I needed to do. So my point is, in all of that, try to think like an actual user of the website would think and feel, and then you can come up with a better user experience. All right, rant aside, let me actually drop in some of this information. So. You can have we're located in downtown. And this is kind of informal, of course. Let's go with downtown St. Philip Avenue. They don't know where that is. There is a parish of St. Philip in Barbados where I live, but I have no clue what St. Philip Avenue is. I'm just using some random thing. Now, of course, they don't want it this big. Right, so about. 36 px or so is reasonable of course when we're doing the css we'll have a different font size than that next to the famous or better yet next to the infamous Pirates Cove, and then they might want to put some blurb there about um, where Blackbeard is alleged to have gotten his first haircut after returning from the Battle of Pineapple. <laughs> you know, some some randomness like that they may want to have there. Well, it's not really all that random, but I mean, you know, when I say not all that random, it's random information, but it's not that random in terms of purpose. Again, even if you're not given um, like a lot of information, because when we started this, I started off with a company that hasn't really. Oops, I forgot to switch back to the other escape, so y'all weren't seeing that. My mistake. But yeah. Um, we started off with a company that wasn't really giving you a lot of information. They just told you we want a website and we want to attract more visitors and we want to, um, like, I think it was improve any rankings on, on Google or something along those lines. We are given very limited information, but we know it's a barbershop. We know what their purpose is, everything. So if that is what you're given and you have kind of like an indecisive, non-communicative non -communicative client, you can still work with them by thinking as they should think or as they may need to think so that's what i'm doing here like we know that it's located in st philip avenue we know it's next to pirate school you can find something interesting and this is how you can even begin to ingratiate yourself to a client so to speak you can write some useful information like this in the market and they may go hey that's a good idea make sure you include that in the final project or any final result and of course, below this, we're going to want to have um, some other information. But since we don't know what that information would be, 
we can pretend that it is there with some lines. And let's just evenly distribute these and then copy them and put them over here. I'll probably resize all of these one time and then distribute them again. Because instead of going with three, I'm going to go with four of these and put them put them all in a row down here. Right, so this could be whatever kind of information goes there. But usually this would be miscellaneous stuff, so this is more like to fill the page both for page rankings and also for you know if you're dealing with visitors who are more or less likely to like to scroll through and, and scrutinize everything some you know some padded information so to speak maybe some pictures with a little bit of text you know like a, a, not a, a full showcase because we still have a an actual showcase page to design but you could have like a you know a basic set of photos here or something so just to capture people's interest when they first come to the page and start to scroll and then of course at the bottom you'll have your copyright information and maybe like a little thing saying design by whoever so for that let's just put actually let me leave this transparent and put a outline Right, so this would be our copyright information and then our design by tagline. And I'm going to divide the two of these with a thin line here as well. So I'll have copyright. Up and cutting. Barber shop. Oops. Barber shop. Gonna use port credit for this one, which is a nice barber shoppy font, if you will. <laughs> Let's put this to a smaller size, of course. And some nice spacing. Okay, so that looks nice there, and then we can have finally our design by information designed. In fact, let me go with small caps really. It looks nicer with small caps. So designed by we're just gonna put Roland Dix or Studios or something. And of course you may want to put like a logo here, so I'm going to do just create a rough logo, not a real one. Right, there we go.
Now if you like, you could probably have a dividing line between the copyright information and all this other stuff. So we're going to just put a thin line right here. You can check the height on this. And below it, I'm going to put a rectangle. covers the entire bottom section of the page and I'm going to give this a very light grey to contrast it from the rest of the page. Good, so there is a rough idea of what the front page will look like. I'm going to copy this that we had from earlier and put it here and here and here. Also up here and up here. Now since we already know, oh, I also need to have it here. And what we could do probably is have like a hierarchy of what would um, be included inside of these. So let's say we have the elements that are included inside of this. We could put them off to the side like that. I'm not going to actually stop and fill in all of those because it would take too much time to be typing through all of that. So maybe what I'll do is in my free time, if I remember, I'll actually go back through and get that filled in. And maybe like on a blog post or whatever, I'll post that, that you can actually see it. Okay, the music stopped abruptly, by the way, because it... it basically went to sleep. <laughs> I have my tabs set to go to sleep so it, it put the music to sleep after a while. Sorry about that. Alrighty, so um, I think this this part of the mock-up is pretty much complete so what I'm going to do now is add a second page and this will be for the showcase and locations of course would be on either it could be either on another page or we could just make that a uh, model dialogue but I won't bother her go through designing all of all of that on a mock-up because that's kind of redundant and I think you kind of have the, the gist of the of designing a mock-up so let's just do the the layout for the um, the showcase page and what that would look like and basically we want to maintain the aesthetics that we have over here on the home page but still create something that is you know distinct enough to stand out as, as its own thing so what we're gonna do is since it's a showcase we want to still start with images at the top I'm gonna just fill in a little area right here about the same size as that or we could probably make it larger so maybe down to about here if you want and again this is where options come in because as you begin to look at, at your design you can say well hey I could stretch it, I could leave it thin, I could put it in between, you know different stuff like that. You can iterate and um, if say you're using Escape, even in Figma you can do this. You can create different pages and copy your elements, fill them in in different ways and come up with all sorts of options and present them to your client. Now one thing I'll, adv I'll advise you not to do don't overdo it when it comes to options because both you and the client can become confused. So this is where some um, discernment, if you will, comes into play. You have to begin to think through which of these options are more likely to be useful and more likely to be chosen. And that's where you need to know your client as well in terms of um, choosing options to present to them. Okay. So don't just go over overdo it and overwork yourself because sometimes you'll end up just wasting your time i want to move this oops i wasn't expecting that ain't skip that was rude <laughs> all right let me see if i can recover that file oh it did auto save thank god for that Okay, 
career. Only one problem, y'all can't see it. There we are. Good. Back in business. Now for those who are wondering, I typically don't use Figma myself. And also even if I did, I, I'm not too fond of generating code and working with it like that. But that's not because I have anything against that. It's just me personally, I like designing from scratch by hand. So even if I do mockups, I like to still get my hands dirty in the code. That's just me. But anyway, so right, we'll have an image up here. But in the case of the showcase, you don't want to have a whole bunch of images, so I'll just select one of these and use it as our showcase image. Now this image already has pretty much the aspect ratio that we want, so I'll just resize this one. Well, it's close enough, not exactly the aspect, the aspect ratio that we need, but it's close. Oops, didn't mean to resize the window there. Let me just make this translucent so you can actually see where everybody falls, and I will get it into position and then clip it. So that's about good there. Set clip. Good. So we have a um, banner image, if you will, for our um, showcase page. So the first thing that you want to do when a user or a visitor gets to the showcase page is you want to hit them with boom. Look at this cut that we did. That's the first thing you want to do. Hit them with that immediately. And then the next thing you want to do is have a title. You don't you don't really want to waste too much time uh, making people read. So we're gonna just put a nav bar here and drop in some text. I'm gonna use port credit again because I think it looks really nice as a barbershop font. I don't know if this is available on Google Fonts, I'll have to check. If it is, that would be really cool though. For some reason this keeps ignoring my settings. Right, let's put instead of showcase, let's go with up and cutting showcase. But you still want to have some brand identity maintained. We'll put that in the center of this. Now, in keeping with what we have over here, we're going to add a shadow underneath this nav bar, so duplicate it. And turn on stroke. Then move it to the bottom. For some reason, this is not putting things where they're supposed to go. <sighs> Computer, why must we misbehave? Oh, I see what happened. This is actually translucent. My mistake. That was why. Is it? I hope that's the real reason. Yeah, it is translucent. Good, so let me move this down by one. And 
going to put this to about 18. I'm not 100% matching the original style of the other shadow. But if you're doing a real mock-up, you might want to actually do that. So you could probably just duplicate everything you have over here and bring it over here. My mouse is just jumpy today. Alright, that looks reasonably close to what we had on the original. So good, this is our showcase and on the showcase page we're going to make the text bigger of course because it's less about um, filling in a whole bunch of information. Now technically this could be bigger still because I mean it is um, the home page and you want to like capture people with this logo but you still why well, didn't do that here and there's a reason I didn't do that it is because you don't want to focus so much on um, the navigation information and stuff like that here you want to more capture people with this stuff right here testimonials events the story etc this navigation information is kind of um, going to become redundant to repeat visitors and they'll just develop a muscle memory for it so the main important thing with this is that it is one visible and two that they know where to find it when they come back so they shouldn't be moving from place to place every couple of weeks when they come back to the site this navigation bar should always be there i should always know when they come to the the left there's a showcase when they come to the right their locations or whatever so size on this doesn't matter as much over here matters a little more because it is going to be probably our only text unless we have like captions on the images or whatever And for those images themselves, what I'm going to do is put them in a side-by-side -side grid. Now, what you could do, if you are um, both talented enough and have the time, you could do a grid that is images of different sizes, kind of like automatically laid out. And technically, you can do that with Flexbox and I believe with CSS grid as well, but it is sometimes a lot of work to do. so. That's why oftentimes you'll see people stick with a typical square or um, rectangle or whatever and just put them side by side repeating like that. them I mean and then do the same with these just center them in the page and that's it so good that's our showcase you don't really need to do much more with this unless you wanted to really you know overdo it with pizzazz or whatever and plus we're going to begin to the code shortly and as i said i don't really want to take too too long on this um mock-up section um the, with the locations i'm thinking i'll probably do that as a model dialogue so i'm not gonna um, or if not a model, what I would probably do is have it replace this section right here, which is actually a waste strategy. So what I'm going to do, copy all of this. Group and add a new page. Paste. Let's try that from here. Okay. 
Oops, what did I just do? Good, pace and drag everything into place. And all this extra information over here, I will be deleting. Okay, wait, I need to ungroup first. Right, so we can delete that. And basically, since the locations will be um, just a bunch of text, I can delete all this. And I'm going to copy these here one time and bring them. Well, not copy. I'm just, just going to drag these up here one time to save us some time. And leave the copyright information in place. Copyright would also be on the um, showcase page as well. Oh, I forgot one thing for the showcase page that we should have. Um... I don't think necessarily that you would need to be going to locations from here, but let's say, well, maybe you might. Always, always think about edge cases, which is something I try to remind myself to do, so I'm going to actually include that as well. But basically, we could have a return home button, which could just have an icon. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, object to path. Right, so that's our button to return home. Could resize it a little bit, of course. And I'm going to put it in the same color as the um, logo text. just to keep some consistency. And finally, we have the locations here. Locations, and we can put that with a little arrow or something. And you'll find sometimes as you're going through your design process that you may come up with a, an idea that can improve the overall design and that's what just happened to me so I'm going to explain that as soon as I finish dropping this in here what I've come up with basically we make this dark turn off stroke I really wish that my mouse would cooperate Okay, let's just make this a little wider. Oops. Forgot to select this thing and use biggest object to align this instead. Good. Now, the idea I just came up with on the fly Instead of just having showcase and location sitting here, I'm going to have them have little icons next to them. Now you may be thinking in your head, wait, well here's a simple idea. Showcase and locations could basically um, all load on one page and even on a technical level there's a way you can do this without having to use any frameworks you can load all that information onto one page and still use just plain html css and js without any frameworks and i'm going to show you that in the code very shortly because i'm almost done here 
Alright, so we'll have showcase with one arrow and locations with the other. I'm not being very exact at this point because I'm just basically getting a point across. So good. So here's what would happen in our navigation. When you click on showcase, it will pull over like it would actually have an animation. And you can do this all in CSS. I've done this before. And JS would be used to, to load the actual information. Or you could even have all that information stored on the page itself, but invisible. So how that will work is that, it, well, not how it will work, but the benefit of that is that it would allow you to actually have your page um, like parse and everything by Google right for the home page. All that information will be there, which could technically improve your SEO um, a little bit. Um, but right, so you could have all that information there, but just not visible, and it could be pulled up immediately when you click this, and it could swipe into place. Or you can have it loaded um, dynamically by JavaScript using Ajax, and same animation could be used. And you can still have a slash showcase and a slash locations on your page because basically what's happening is that that data can be duplicated without duplicating. I'll explain that as I said when we get to the code. But it's, it's surprisingly simple and it's really cool. All right. So as I said, the navigation is simple. Showcase would come in from the left. Location is coming from the right. And of course, up and cutting is always here. So if either of these get loaded, this would become clickable. And you'd always be able to go back to the home page from there. So what would happen here is we would have I'm going to put a simple line in between this and showcase if my mouse would cooperate. Right, so we'll have this between the two of those. And let me just make up and cutting have the same color as the arrows because that's the logo color. I meant to make the showcase black. I don't know how come that happened. Okay, good. So showcase wouldn't be clickable. This part would be, and that can take you home. Locations would take you to locations, of course. We can resize this down to match what we have on the home page, at least in a relative sense. And in the interest of time, I'm not gonna go through and do that over here on the locations page. And I'm not going to change these images either. That would be done when we actually get around to the code. I could probably do that for the blog at some point if I, um, well, not if. When I get around to it, I'll just have to remember to write that down to it. All right, so good. I think that's pretty much it for this mock-up. Let's jump to the code and build some basics. Let's lay out some basics. And we're not going to do the full CSS today. I'm just going to show you my process for choosing what should actually go in to the HTML code and what um, what we require for the basic layout after you've built the mockup. And the reason for this is, as I said, I want to emphasize to you, CSS and HTML have separate duties and they should be kept separate. So for today's stream, I'm not going to really touch on the CSS, except maybe just for the, the set of very basic layout, but we're going to do a little bit of um, well, mostly focus on the HTML to build these three pages that you see here. And that's why I had these labels over here, which I, as I said, I'm not going to go through all of them. But these labels over here would get replaced with which elements we're actually going to use. Same thing would happen on the showcase. Same thing would happen on locations. And then we can just go ahead and start filling that in in our HTML. All right, so I have Atom open. In fact, let me use VS Code because VS Code is actually a little better than Atom for purposes like this. 
especially duplicating stuff. I mean, Emmett works in at home too, but it's not as smooth to me, I think. And I'm not actually going to show you the preview today, or, well, I probably may at some point if I get around to it, but I'm not really planning to focus on the preview today. Alright, this is our outline that we had, so I was like, loads, you should see it. Right, this is the outline that we had, let's see if we are still keeping it trapped before I go any further. The um, Up and Cutting Barbershop is a new barbershop in the downtown fictional city of whatever. Don't need this survey. Um, looking to capture new clientele and become the number one barbershop in the area. Now their needs are they need us to build them a website to attract new customers and expand the business to them. And possible features will be testimonials, photos of past customers, a contact form, a map showing location, and social media links. So one thing that I'm missing in the mock-up is contact form. I did not remember to include that. But what we could do... Oh, I now remember I forgot that was in the wireframe section, actually. So I did, I did skip a little piece here. My mistake. I, I take responsibility for that. And this again is good. That mistakes happen sometimes. Happen in real life to when you're doing real life projects. Reminds you sometimes to keep a checklist. And to go through your checklist and see that you are keeping track of everything as you should. Alright, so let me see what I would have missed in the wireframe. As soon as it loads. Alright, so I have all of what I need here. I think this was an optional layout as well, wasn't it? I should have marked this, but what had happened, Inkscape was crashing that time, and yeah, <laughs> I didn't mark this, but I think this was supposed to be an optional layout or something. Or was this mobile view? One of the two. But in any case, we would have... Right, there's the one part I forgot to add in the, in the mock-up. We'll have social media links up in this corner and a menu up in this corner. And the menu, of course, would be for mobile view. So the social media links would be for any view. And the social media links will also include our contact button. So, right, contact form and map showing location. So, right, the map showing location will go on our location page. That's what all this white space is for here. We would fill that in with a map. And what else do we need? All right, social media links. Point here is to keep in mind, this business is people-oriented, so people should be front and center. We've done that. We don't want to rely on using illustrations. Instead, we want to focus on real people and connecting with them. So, where do those principles show up? Well, first things first, we started with real people in photos of, of real people actually getting their hair cut or trimmed or anything like that. And then the other way that we focus on people is we focus on what people are looking for. So we cut it down to minimal navigation. We put events and important stuff first and foremost. We put a story of the founder. We put testimonials in place. We have a little blurb describing the company and whatever this other extra stuff here would be, which we would have to talk to our client and determine, well, what else do you want to put on your homepage? And then we put stuff like copyright information and design by, by you know, our studio, etc. last. So we've been people focused here. Secondarily, we have a showcase. And in the showcase, we went people focused again by making this section here stand out with the logo keep the navigation straightforward and we kept the um, content down to just photos so we don't have a whole lot for users or, or, or visitors to come and get confused by and finally on the location page we would have our location information and a map so again we're staying people focused because we're getting to the point and we're not trying to focus on ourselves and when I say ourselves, I mean the business itself is not trying to basically focus on, oh, look at us, we're so wonderful, we're a great business. Because trust me, when I tell you, nobody cares. <laughs> you understand? 
Nobody cares about that. They care about whatever purpose that they come to your website for. So focus on purpose. And that's what I like to call purpose-driven development. So focus on purpose and stick to your purpose. And in this case, our purpose was to basically focus on real people and connecting with them. That is what drives this um, website. All right, so our design of the website. So with all that said and done, let me jump into the HTML that I was flapping about earlier. So we're gonna create a new file and put in the basics. Well, let me save this file first before um, I go any further because if not, it is not going to have a clue what language it is. Oh, yeah. I could do that right here. My mistake. HTML. And is it allowing me to save or not? I keep pressing Control S and nothing's coming up. Because my computer is special. Or maybe it's just not in the mood. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so let us make this here. Um, well, in fact, we can save this inside a mock up. So, iteration. Zero and let's save this as index.html. I think Visual Studio Code doesn't like to respond to my keyboard input for certain things. That is not kind. Alright, so we have our basic HTML in place. Just change the title to up and cutting barber shop. And now, we have to determine what elements we need to include. So first things first, we have the image up here. That should be a header. And we're actually going to have more than one header. Don't get panicky about that. But I'm going to explain why more than one header. Or better yet, I'm thinking now, what I'm thinking of is the social media icons. but. Since we're going to have um, the logo here, and we're not putting the logo up at the top anywhere, we don't need the extra header. So let me scrap that. I was saying we we would need to because my mind immediately went to designs I normally do where I put the logo in the top. And you should use a header for that because um, nav is not the correct thing. And putting it inside the nav is not the correct thing either, semantically. So don't do that. So. Right, we have a header, this will have an image. And of course we want to go with one image as opposed to multiple images unless those images will be being replaced um, like dynamically. Like say using JavaScript or even um, CSS or anything like that. Just go with one image. And usually I would tell you avoid um, like carousels and you know like a whole bunch of animation. It's nice sometimes, but it can also be a little bit of overkill, so avoid it unless you really know how to make it look nice. Just stick to one image like with a bunch of people. Unless you're gonna have it say like a a slowly fading something and you know like maybe zooming or something like that, but not overdone. You don't really want to overkill it. And plus you also have to think about accessibility. Not everybody can handle motion, etc. So, right, as I said, header, single image, and then we have a nav that will go above that. And so in order for it to go above, we need to put it below. And that's just for the sake of the Z index. If we put this nav above the header, it will actually be below it automatically. So we have a nav, and inside the nav, we're going to have a UL element, which is an ordered list, of course, but also use some menus. Now, I could go into the history of this and why they chose an ordered list for my use, but it will not. All I advise you to do is Google it and read about it. It is a long and very interesting history. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, so we need within this a uh, um, list element and then an anchor element. And you can duplicate these. Like maybe twice or so. So let's say you have Facebook. I'm going to 
gonna put image on all this Facebook or Facebook icon image and the alt would be Twitter icon and one more image the alt for this one is Instagram icon and for the last one I'm gonna put the contact button so this would be contact button icon now you could probably also put a share thing here too so let me yeah because you want to encourage people to share so let me just put one last thing I was saying the contact would be last but I'll put share share icon and we'll put a little divider in between the two of these so li with a div or better yet we don't necessarily need to go with an extra thing for this. Because, and why I'm saying that, sometimes as you're designing, you can look to see where you can reduce. Always look to see where you can put less. Because with web design, less is more. So instead of putting an LA with an extra element, we're going to add a class to it. And this would be class divider. Or a class uh, social, social divider. And then below this, you're gonna have another UL element, which should be our menu. The class for this, I should actually add a class to this first one too. So this one should be class socials. And then the class for this one would be main menu. Is it? Let me just double check our wireframe to make sure I'm not getting this wrong. Now I have changed reach us to locations. So what I'm thinking, all oh right, I remember now this is actually, I think this is supposed to be mobile view or something like that. Yeah, this is probably supposed to be our mobile view. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to actually make this nav end up going up here to become our menu. So I'm going to move that out from within this nav down here. Oops. Put it in its own nav. Just need to select this cut nav class main nav and then we have the main menu so the main menu is these three elements right here but that main menu does not become clickable as a menu or, or it doesn't display as a menu until it's on mobile view we don't need to worry about that now because that's taken care of in css but what we can probably do is just add a, um, a comment that says this will turn into a menu on mobile viewports. And of course, within this now we need um, LIA, whoops, LIA by three. Oh wait, I did that incorrectly, didn't I? I'll figure this syntax out at some point. I need to Google it and figure it out, but I am being lazy. All right, so we only need three of these and they will have, um, what was the first one again? Let me look back at this thing because I actually forgot. Right, showcase. up and cutting and locations all 
Now actually, I'm going to switch these over to buttons. Now, let me explain why I'm switching them to buttons on the homepage. We are going to have this be loaded dynamically using JavaScript, as I mentioned earlier. Or we could have it, well yeah, it's using JavaScript, so it could either be loaded dynamically, or we can have it be loaded from right on the page, but it just isn't visible. But either way, you want to use a button instead of a, of a um, anchor element for that purpose. Because um, anchor elements are not supposed to perform actions of that sort. Buttons are. So I'll have a button and on click. And that would have um, a function inside. Well, let's just leave it blank for now because we'll figure out what the functions will be eventually. We'll just copy that to each of these. And I will put a note here as to why that is so. These buttons will load content dynamically using JavaScript. think I need anything else there. Right, let me just check the class. All right, this nav up here should be class socials nav and this I'm going to change to socials menu. The header of course would be class um, main header. And underneath all of these now we'll have a main element now. I wasn't to put it at the bottom, but I just remember Z index is important. And we want the main to actually come at the top of the page because it is supposed to always show below everything else that comes underneath it. In the Z index, of course. So main and that main will include all of this information that you see here beneath this navigational section of the page. Alright, so within the main we're going to have um, a section that contains two articles. That would be this one here with important stuff and this one here with story. So we're going to have class. On each of these one will have a class of events. Or better yet, notices. Because that covers both events and stuff that's not recurring. And then um, underneath that we will have the one that goes to the right, and this one will be story. The section will be called um, or info, let's call it info box. And then beneath that we can have another section. Now, originally I had said okay, my computer seems to have stuck there. Originally I had said that these here would be sections. I'm thinking I'm going to make them articles instead be since they're self-contained blocks of information they should be articles and not sections. So that's a small correction I need to make there. Um, so these will be contained in a section but they are articles. And in this case we'll have article by four Right. We'll call this testimonials. And we don't need classes to the articles because we're going to just pick one option. And of course, this would be done at the stage where you've shown your client the um, mock up before you actually have to switch over to designing your. Um, physical interactive interactive version of the mock-up you would have already shown them this image version and they would have chosen which of these styles they want 
and so in your code you don't need to have a whole bunch of separate styles just one parent element with a style and all the articles can pull from that all right so we'll add as i said testimonials as the class there don't need anything else now as for this middle section here what can we build this out of well typically this should only need about i'm looking at it now we have two of these things here that are um, horizontal we have one vertical lane which can serve as the parent and we have then these two things on either side only one element needed to produce that feature though so watch this we're gonna have a div and inside that div we're gonna have two other divs let me get around to the css you'll see how simple and straightforward this was even though it, it might seem complicated at this point it's actually pretty straightforward so this will be dividing line or better yet testimonial testimonial divider and for each of these we don't need to have any classes because the testimonial divider will provide its children with some information and if you would have seen my stream on um, on combinator CSS combinators you will see why we don't need to add any classes to these they'll just pull in from their parent or their selector will pull in from the parent and automatically know what to do and when we use flexbox to lay them out you won't need to have or even if we don't use flexbox you can use absolute positioning anything like that you won't need to have any um layout information on these basically they'll, they'll be put in place automatically so yeah we'll get to that when we get to the css but these will be laid out automatically and their um dots and everything like that will come from css so you just need this as your content two days um below this section with testimonials we're gonna have another section and this section is going to have our blurb so we're gonna call this section class blurb and within it we will put we're located in downtown St. Philip Avenue next to the infamous Pirates Cove where Blackbeard is alleged to have gotten his first haircut after returning from the Battle of Pineapple. And why the Battle of Pineapple? Because someone refused to put pineapples on their pizza and Blackbeard was not having it. And I must have to... Well, sorry, not I must have to. I have to. I have to support him in, in his effort to get that person to use proper culinary etiquette and put pineapples on their pizza. <laughs> Alright, so below that we'll have another section with some articles. Um, by four, this is class extra info, whatever that extra info may be. We don't need to style those articles separately, they'll get styled by their parent or by the combinator that pulls from their parent, I should say. Then we'll have a, a horizontal line, so HR element, just one, and that will be that horizontal line right here. We can do all the styling for that in CSS. And finally, we have a um, it wasn't a sales section, but let's go to footer to keep it semantic. So we have a footer, and inside of that footer, we will put um, a section and an article, followed by a horizontal line, followed by an article, followed by an image, and that's basically it. So, oh, the image will have um, designer logo here. 
and say alt. Yeah, that's basically it for our HTML. So now that we've done that, we can move on to the showcase. But before I move on to the showcase of the HTML for that, I'm just going to run through again my decisions on what we built. All right. So starting from the bottom and coming up, because this is whole CSS work, CSS now is actually going to style this um, so that these here that are at the bottom are basically the ones at the top in the order. So yeah, we start with the, with the CSS, we have main nav. The main nav will be off to the right when it is in mobile view, but typically it's the strip that will lay across below the header with our navigational information. And I need to adjust this webcam a bit because they all can't see me. Alright, I'm still not sure why I'm disappearing, but oh well. Yeah, anyway, so right. Above that, you'll have the socials nav, and the reason it is above that in the HTML code is because it is below the main nav in order, but it is still going to be above the main header in order. And the main header will be our image. I should add a um, alt to this image here. This is. Um, Hero, let's call it hero image, even though, well, yeah, let's call it that. It's not really a hero because it doesn't have any text, but anyway, we'll call it hero image for one of a better word right now. Above that will be the main. Well, this footer, I should put the footer um, outside the main. So let me just correct that. Sorry, above the header, we'll have the footer. The footer is, is technically shown above the main. And we can decide when we actually get our own the CSS if the footer should show up above the main when it is resized to be on mobile view or not. Then you have above that um, the main itself, which is the container for all our information. And our information would include a section that says um, that has our notices and our stories side by side, then a section with testimonials. A blurb and any extra info that your client wants to include and I believe that is it for the HTML on this at least in terms of the basics but there's one thing that I mentioned that we need to do now which is using a base um, element or well not element sorry this is a it's a tag I believe but yeah it is basically going to allow us to load stuff um, directly on the page without having to um, navigate again to another page. But still, we're going to be able to navigate to those other pages and load as if we were on the home page. I'll explain that in a future stream in full. But we're going to leave base here. Uh, well, in fact, let me not leave it in this file. I, mean, I should put this in locations. It doesn't need to be any home page. Home page already does this automatically. But base is going to be used in the um, locations and showcase file, which I'm basically going to copy from this. So let me just control C, control A and control C everybody. And what I'm going to do over here is duplicate this into some new folders. So we have locations and we will have um, oh yeah, showcase Right, so now that has a copy of the first file in it. What we 
we're going to do is open those two files. Right. And now that we've opened these, we're going to basically delete everything inside of them and drop those inside of another file. And I'll explain that um, the next, in the next stream, when I complete this process, I'll explain why I'm doing all this like this. So just cut that and let me get back to my file manager here, create a new file call this home.html whoops I created a folder didn't I delete that was accidental what I want is a new document text file rename to home.html Just paste everything that should be on the home page into home.html. Close that. Same thing as showcase. Take everything and delete. So the only thing now it will have is the body. And the index can stay as it is, or we can you can even leave it as it is, or you can do why with advice in this case, which is Go ahead and delete all this stuff because we already saved it to home.html. That will get loaded by default um, when the page is loaded, but we're not going to do that just yet. I will get to that next week. So what I'm going to do here is add a comment just to remind myself. No content because we will load it dynamically. I'm just going to change the title on these so that it says locations and showcase and I'm going to add base to each of these pages and the base is one level up. And as I said, next week we will we will be filling in um, all the missing steps that will be required to make this work. But for this week, what I'm going to do is just put in the before we finish. I'm going to put in the basic HTML for these two pages, and then we're going to close out. So let me just take a quick look over here at the mockup and see what we need. We're going to keep the same um, navigational elements. So back over here, open um, home.html and just the section from footer down to the bottom right before. Well, okay, I forget this doesn't have a body tag because we cut this out of the body. Sorry. That section, drop that in here. Oh, and we're also going to add to the body a class. That will be locations for locations and showcase for showcase. Let me drop that content in here as well. Now, if you're wondering why do we have these classes on the body of showcase and locations, it is for this section right here where we have the logo and the and the um, 
styles or stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a CSS combinator um, to basically style these separately depending on which page they're on. So let me just put a note here. This will be styled by a combinator that pulls I don't know what word that was that pulls from the body all right and no locations what content will locations need we will fill that in and then drop it in a separate file so let's just take a quick look back at the mock-up and see what it will need. So we'll need a section here, a say of the main, and we will also need a horizontal line, and then I'm guessing the map will probably be either an iframe or a canvas. So let us put main section article article by four we don't need any selectors to these because we have locations here as the um, class and we can set up um, the CSS so that it either uses combinators or variables so that once it finds this class locations it styles everything inside this main here automatically so let me just make a note of that CSS for this will pull from the body's class. Oh, and we also need an iframe. This is for the map. It could also be a canvas if we were to use that technology. Depends on the API we choose to use. Could be a, it could be an iframe, it could be a canvas, anything like that. Alright, um, that's basically it for locations. So that's pretty easy. And we can cut again, cut the main. And I'll also pull its um, comment as well. Oh, before I go any further, I should actually put a marker here. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna cut the main one adjustment. I need to make because it just crossed my mind again. We need to make this adjustment to home as well. Let me just check and see what home contains. Yeah, we're gonna need to make a slight adjustment to home and to the um. To the home in that page. So let me create a new file. Let me do it from over here. Save myself some trouble. Um, this would be locations.html. Another new file which will be um, showcase.html Right, so we're gonna paste what did I just do? I accidentally copied blank space. Let me see if I can find back what I need here. Right, good, there we go. 
so here's the adjustment I need to make. I didn't remember this earlier that when we pull in this stuff dynamically, it needs to be loaded into something. So what we're gonna use on each page is the main itself as what we want to load into. And we're just gonna put the content of the main in each of these files. So for, oops, I didn't mean to close home. For home, what that means is we're gonna select everything within that main and put it right here. Let me check on this part here and see. Is this the right file though? All right, so let me close locations. Oops, didn't mean to drag that over there. Uh, let me leave it alone. <laughs> it's confusing enough as it is. All right, I'll leave it alone. So over here, let's add a main and, oops, and all of the access information that I just dealt with, I'm gonna drop that at the bottom there because we don't need the um we don't need to to dynamically load the footer and all the other stuff like that so I actually come to think of it yeah i made i just realized i made a an adjustment that's not necessary per se <sighs> did i yeah, this, can, this part can get a little confusing. I, I apologize. Uh, sometimes the gears are turning too fast in my head. So let me just do a quick double check on my thought process and make sure I have this correct before I confuse them any further. All right, so we're loading for, this is the homepage. We're loading all this stuff here from this section up into main and if I remember correctly, the header image changes and the menu will change as well. Yeah, so what I'll do is put these separate from um, from the rest of the stuff and it's just the body class that will change. So yeah, JavaScript will be, re will be responsible for changing some stuff around. Let me just drop these in here, good. All right, so this content doesn't need to change now here. It's just this section here will get changed depending on if the body has a particular class or not. No, it sounds a little bit confusing, but when I play it all out, you'll see it is really not confusing at all. Um, okay, so home is done. Locations is done. And showcase is the last one that we need. Let me see which page this is, right. This here, let's add a main to it. And we can close it. And for the showcase, what we will need is, Alright, we'll already have the nav and all that stuff in place. That will get changed by a class. And all we will need to add is a section and some articles and figures with images. So, section, article by three. Alright, wait, let me see here. Article, um, figure image and that should be yeah there we go it didn't get the, the by three part i need to figure out that syntax or google it again because i read it recently and forgot it all right so we're gonna have not well, three of these let's make it six so let's copy this Now, optionally, you could have figure caption as well, but we're going to pretend that our client didn't ask for any um, figure caption, so we'll just have figures and images. And the figures, of course, are going to be used to style the 
in these containers. The articles will be used for layout. The figures will be used only for styling. Good, so that is that. All our HTML is in place. Next time around we will get to the CSS. Then we will do a slightly different iteration of this and, um, and that will also be done in CSS. And then following that will be the JavaScript to tie it all together. All right, so that is basically it for today. I hope that you enjoy this. It was kind of long and a little tedious, I know, but I hope you were still able to follow along despite me sometimes coming up with ideas on the fly. That's how I work. That's how my process goes. I sometimes switch in the middle of, of my decision making process and go, you know what would be cool? This would be cool. So yeah, can be a little bit of a roller coaster, right? but hopefully you were, you were able to follow and hopefully you're getting something from this and enjoying it. Um, next week we'll be continuing this project again, God willing. And I will also be looking to continue my um, CSS art, well not CSS art, my Escape art project that I've been working on um, before I get into some more um, humanality project and other projects like that. But I'll, I'll have to see how my time and availability goes in terms of planning, so we'll see what is possible but yeah hope you enjoyed all that make sure to check out my gumroad store and my other stores teespring and redbubble so you can get some cool merchandise and all the good stuff and make sure you go and download my templates if you are a designer and you're looking for some really cool templates to get your website started and make it look unique check out my gumroad page and check me on dev as well i'm writing some tutorials and stuff recently and i have a, a new tutorial coming very soon showing you how you can build a um, website with a, or a web page not a website a web page with a dynamic sidebar that's going to be really fun and also continuing the css fun stuff um project gonna have another iteration of that out hopefully very soon which is the one on combinators we already did the primer on combinators but we're actually gonna have a project kind of like a little um game if you will all in pure css no need for javascript just using combinators all right so that's that and yeah one little reminder music today as usual is from creators lib on youtube they do free music and sound effects to content creators. And as for me, you know who I am. I am Roland Dixar, also known as Roland Taylor. You can find me on RolandDixar.pro. You can find my streaming page, RolandDixar.pro slash streaming. Follow me on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and pretty much anywhere there's a platform, <laughs> you will find me there under the same name. So until next time, go design, create, and yeah, hope you have fun. See you next.